All right, freaks and freakettes, it's time for a brand new student of the gun radio. What are we going to talk about today? Cops versus cops and politicians versus the rights of the people. Yeah, I said it. I meant it. I'm here to represent it. Uh, we got a Duracoat finished firearm of the week. We got a bullet point for you. We got an update, a bullet point update. Uh, bear attacks, they keep happening, and we're going to keep talking about it until they stop happening or people you know, nut up and figure out what the fuck to do. I'm sorry. I'm, I just did that, but, uh, yeah, write it down. All right. And then, uh, and then whatever it else is, it is we want to talk about. Also, uh, if you are, this is my regular reminder to you. If you're, uh, on the discord or you have the discord or whatever, and you want to ask a question, go ahead and ask it. And, uh, Zach will pay attention to it and then we'll deal with it. How's that sound? All right. Sounds good. Sounds good to me. Play the music. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, proudly brought to you from the SDS Import Studio. If you want quality that's affordable, visit sdsimports.com. We don't just talk guns and gear. We also discuss current events and politics because guns are politics. Now sit back and listen louder to your co-host, CEO of Full 30, Jared Markle, and your beloved host, the Pimp Hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. Yeah, it's me. It is I, and I'm here. And I'm not going to lie to you. I, I, uh, I'm a little bit incensed, a little bit worked up. And I, I'm not worked up because of the Ukraine-Russia thing. Um, I, I'm, I'm worked up because of the the rampant stupidity of the american people i don't care about the rest of the world the rest of the world can just you know fix themselves but after two years of non-stop propaganda from the mainstream news media from cnn and et al you know new york times the you know washington post et al uh what you call it, freaking Pravda, USA Today, after two years of literal nonstop lies and propaganda to support a narrative, a ruling class narrative, now that this crap's going on in Ukraine and people are like, they're, they're telling me things or they're posting things based on what? Oh, based on what I saw on the news. What? So you're telling me that you you have strong opinions about what's going on over there based on what you saw on NBC or you read in the New York Times and the Times of New York or uh, Washington Post or any mainstream news outlet. Oh, I saw that the you know the Time Magazine said that this is the beginning of the end for Russia and uh, I you know at and the the propag the in the retarded propaganda coming out zach did you see the one with the supposed miss ukraine um po- out? she's gonna go fight putin and she's got her rifle and and i, I did didn't see, see that post I, I i didn't really follow up on it i was just like cool and moved on it was fake well yeah not surprising at all it was fake. The whole thing was fake. She was holding and, and people called it immediately because you can't pull that. So you can pull that kind of crap on Democrats and liberals because they're not that smart. But our side, they're like, it's she's holding an airsoft gun. All right. She's posing with an airsoft rifle in the snow. And there it, yeah, it was it was fake. It was a fake. And the ghost of Kiev thing was was a fake we we talked about that yesterday zach it was free they pulled footage from a video game it's like come on come on people it, it, people want something so badly that they're just willing to believe anything stop being distracted this is what i'm going to tell you i posted this on the official paul markle fascist book page all right all right you got to stop Allow, Americans got to allow us stop allowing themselves to be so freaking. We're like puppets. We're literally like puppets on a string, and, and we can be manipulated. The U.S. dollar is losing value by the day. 
all the money you have in your savings account and your checking account is becoming more and more worthless by the day. We still have a freaking criminal dementia patient. Now, I'm not going to let him let him off from being a criminal. Okay, he's a corrupt politician, but he's also a dementia patient, and he's he's the the epitome of weakness in the White House. You can't have a weak, feckless, corrupt politician as your president and not expect the rest of the world to disrespect him and think you're a joke. Our border is not secure. Our southern border is not secure. We're being invaded. You know, Zach, I'm going to go ahead and say it. Uh, all these people out there with the, oh, man, uh, I stand with Ukraine. And and how dare a foreign country just you know, nobody cares about sovereign borders. You know, all of a sudden, the liberals are worked up about the sovereign border of Ukraine. What about the sovereign border of the United States of America, liberal puke bags? Oh, it's racist to not let people just walk over your border. You can't stop people. They're just looking for a better life. Maybe the Russians are just looking for a better life. Maybe they rolled up to that that sovereign border of Ukraine and said, you know what? We're just looking for a better life. The American liberals have to support this. You know, uh, you know, but rather than walking across with backpacks, we're just going to roll across and, you know, BMPs and you know T-72s or T-80s or whatever. Uh, yeah, all of a sudden, the, the liberal left is really concerned about the sovereign border of a nation. What about the sovereign border of the United States of America? Do you care about that? Oh, uh, well, no, that's different because we hate Trump. Half the country has been poisoned by a freaking dangerous medical experiment. We got a lot of problems in the United States that need to, that should be addressed. I'm sorry that you, you know, that you are hashtag stand with Ukraine. Most of these mother lovers out there never heard of it. I'm going to I'm going to go ahead on record. Ninety nine percent of the people posting ice hashtag stand with Ukraine. Two weeks ago, you could have handed them a globe and said, I'm going to give you two seconds to find Ukraine and point to it. They couldn't have done it. You could ask them, where's Ukraine? Oh, it's over there on the other side, you know, of the world somewhere. They couldn't point to it. They couldn't even find it. And you got retards uh, on the, the, the news calling Kiev all right, the capital of Ukraine is Kiev. It's been Kiev like for the whole entire history of the world, and they're pronouncing it Kiev. Are you freaking retarded? Ah, oh, the the troops are ro are rolling into Kiev. Kiev. What are you talking about? Ah, oh, that's my rant on that. Uh, yeah, but stop being so easily distractible. You're, you're, you're like a puppet on the string. It's, it's pathetic. It's literally pathetic how weak and stupid and easily distracted Americans are. And I'm sick of it. All right, moving on. Uh, we already played the music. I already told you to ask your freaking questions. So ask a freaking question. <laughs> New people, like first timers, what did we get into here? I don't know if I want to stay. This guy's, this guy is hurt. My, he's wounding my inner child. I don't know. There's a bobcat attack my wife. That's right. There's a freaking bobcat attack my wife. Zach, play the intro music for the Duracoat finished firearm of the week. All right, freaks and freakettes, what do I have in my hand today? I have a an M57. I'm going to hold it up like this. You're like, that looks like a Takarov. That's because it is. Um, 
The M57, however, was the Serbian Yugoslavian. Uh, you guys know that Yugoslavia broke up into a bunch of smaller countries. Uh, these were originally made in Yugoslavia. Now they're made in Serbia. Uh, and and this, was, this was an import from Century Arms. Uh, in order to import it, they had to put this uh, R-tarded safety on the slide this push up to fire safety, which was not on the original guns. I don't think it was on the original guns because uh, it's r Uh The difference, you say, okay, well, what's the difference between that and the, the TT-33 that you talked about a couple of weeks ago? Well, if you if you look, the, the grip is longer. It has a longer grip uh, and it has a longer magazine. It has a, a single column magazine. But this gun holds one more round than the TT-33 did. Uh, but essentially, it functions and, and works in, in, the, in an identical fashion. The, the one uh, r -tarded, the other r -tarded thing that they put on this gun uh, is they put a magazine disconnect safety on it, which is not on the TT-33. I'm not sure if that was on the... See, that's, that's the problem with import guns. You talk about an import gun, you say, well, the import gun has these features. And then somebody historic, you know, a historian will say, yeah, dummy, but but, you know, the original guns didn't have that. I'm like, I oh, I'm I trust you. And and I, I believe that they, they may not have had that, but I can't get one of those. You, we can't get an original M57 into the United States because it doesn't have a stupid thumb safety on it or whatever. It doesn't have a disconnect safety. Now, the, the Duracoat part of this, if you look, as I'm holding it up to the camera and you guys on Discord can see, you're like, it looks green. Yes. Uh, imported guns, uh, generally imported guns or, or you know surplus guns, they, they spent a, a bunch of time sitting in a warehouse or in Connex boxes or you know uh, stacked up on pallets or whatever. And quite often, by the time you get it into your hands, the finish is kind of, eh, you know, looks a little bit old, looks a little bit worn, what have you. Uh, sometimes it's, it's you know, the, the parts are, they look a little bit different, like the slide looks like it's warm, but maybe the frame doesn't or, or vice versa or whatever. And uh, that's the way this one was. You know, it, it didn't look terrible, but it looked like an old gun. I mean, it looked like an old surplus gun. And I said, you know what? I can do, I can do one better. I can, uh, go, I'm going to go ahead and put the, I put the Duracoat World War II olive drab green finish on it. It's not camouflage, you know. It's not. A, it's not a camo gun. It's not not anything super fancy, but it's a a you know stripped it down. Uh, Use the true strip to get all the grease and you know. And that's the thing with surplus guns. You most surplus guns are packed with grease and oil, so they don't rust any more than they already did. So by the time you get it into your hands, it's you know it's got all kinds of uh, uh, whatever Soviet, Soviet Cosmoline Vaseline, uh, you know, inside of it. Um, I know it's not Vaseline. Don't write me letters. I'm not an idiot. Uh, the Cosmoline and, and the various, you know, stuff, the oils to keep it from rusting. If you're going to put Duracoat on it, you want to get all that crap off. So you disassemble it, spray the uh, true strip on it, shh, use a blue scratch pad or, or a 3M pad and clean it up to super you want it to be dry it's like super dry then you put the dura coat on it let it sit and it'll be good to go i did this several 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 years ago but uh, uh it's good to go it's a good looking finish so today's dura coat finished firearm of the week oh and of course this is uh, a true 762 by 25 millimeter 762 by 25 millimeter takarov uh and this is the 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 larger version uh it's the only the, yeah like i said the main difference is they put this this artarded paddle safety thing on the on the slide here uh and it does have a longer magazine now the neat thing about these magazines is these fit into the the tt33 so if you didn't mind it sticking out a half inch out of the bottom you could up your round count in your tt33 by sticking one of these in there so uh not a bad gun not a bad gun shoots just fine it's got big freaking metal sights on it if you oh, hold this up there you go 
making people nervous right there. Uh, so yeah, a good gun, a fun gun. And I know you're like, yeah, but I looked at one and it was way more than I wanted to spend guys. Th this is the world. <laughs> uh, when, when they were bringing those in, man, they were priced to sell. They were, they were in the, you know, 175 to $200 range. Um, and now people are like, oh man, I just looked at one and it was $300 and that's bull crap. I'm like, I don't know what to tell you, bros. Uh, you got to get them when you, when the getting is good. And then of course, a lot of places you, you go to look them up and they're like out of stock, out of stock, out of stock. So, uh, mine came with two nine round magazines. Uh, and, uh, it's a, it's a solid gun. It's a solid gun. Uh, if, if you want one great. And, and the truth is, uh, I don't know how many uh, guys in my audience experience shooters in my eyes. I think that the the Russian 762 pistol round is really underappreciated. I don't think that Americans quite understand it. Uh, so. But that's just me. All right. So uh, if you would like to be a Duracoat finishing expert, go to Dur go to studentofthegun.com slash Duracoat. Sign up for Duracoat University. It's an online distance learning training program. And you, too, can be an expert Duracoater and be the envy of all your friends and neighbors. Oh, all right. Uh, so the it, it is now... Uh, a new month, last month's SDS imports giveaway of the week of the month was a PX9 Gen 3. And uh, we, we don't have this because we're recording this right at the, uh, you know, uh, at the end of the month. So we, we don't have the winner yet. Uh, of, I don't have the winner's name yet, but uh, congratulations if you are the winner. <laughs> Uh, SDS Imports, giving away guns, supporting student of the gun, and giving away goods all at the same time. So, yeah, that is that is something. That is something. So, all right. Uh, also, uh, hi, our buddies at High Point, what are they doing? I don't know. What are they doing? Well, well last week we talked. Was it last week? No. It was at least one day ago. No, I, we, we've been... I've been remiss because the last how many re, how many episodes did we record in Salt Lake in Jared's studio? Uh, I think five. Total. I think we recorded five. Oh yeah, because the last one uh, that public episode that we did here, uh, I discussed the Bowcaster, the ten millimeter, and uh, they're actually i i talked about them on uh, the 10 millimeter high point carbines and they're less than five they're less than 400 bucks uh for the base model uh for the base model i think the base models are like 399 and then if you want the fancy one with the the different camouflages and stuff like that then they're a little bit more expensive uh but there's there's certainly if you're uh if you're looking for a gateway drug into the 10 millimeter cartridge <laughs> You're like, boy, I sure would. I, I kind of, I'm kind of interested in that 10 millimeter, but I can't, I can't justify a thousand dollars for a 10 millimeter pistol. So, what am I going to do? Yeah, there you go. And get yourself a high point carbine in 10 millimeter, and that way, dip your toe in the water. How's that sound? That's it. All right, moving on, moving on, moving on. Next. Oh, now, if you are a relatively new listener or a brand new listener, uh, you should close that hole under your nose, open up both of your ears, and listen louder. Attention new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. Ah, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. All right, we're going to go ahead and just jump right smack 
dab into the new Brownells bullet points. So get ready, hippies. Bing, bang, boom. Get on it. Get on it. So uh, this is the part of the show that we like to talk about hardware. Uh, the brown nose bullet points when we talk about pieces, parts, hardware, all that good stuff. And so I thought, well, uh, this would be a good time for us to discuss the, uh, the well, I'll give you an update on the BFT-47. The bulged forged trunnion. That's right. Bulged forged trunnion. The BFT 47. This is the Century Arms uh, attempt to to please the the basement dwelling, beanbag sitting, Cheeto eating, orange phallus having whiners on the internet. <laughs> did I did I make it past the censor on that, Zach? I think everything you said was copacetic. Okay, Zach said I made it past the censor on that one. <laughs> so uh, while we were in uh, the the Lake of Salt, we, uh, we were in Salt Lake City. Uh, we went to uh, one of our favorite haunts, the TNT Gun Range, right off of Interstate 15 there. And in addition to having numerous pistol bays, and in and the only indoor sporting clays facility, hundred percent indoor enclosed sporting clay facility in Utah, uh, maybe in the United States, but definitely in Utah. Uh, in addition to having that, they also have rifle tunnels underneath the building. So before they they built it, they put in. They were smart. They're like, you know what? Here's what we're going to do. They put in a basement. And in the basement, you know what's interesting, Zach? I would like to have seen or, you know, that construction process. They put in rifle tunnels under the building that go out to 98 yards. So a very strange, specific number. I think they just like ran out of yards. I don't know. Possibly, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, they, they used concrete culvert pipe. You know, I think it's a six foot concrete culvert pipe or five foot concrete culvert pipe. Uh, I don't know if you could get in and walk standing up. You'd probably have to walk hunched over, but uh, depending on how tall you are. Yeah. So uh, Zach and Jared and I took a day uh, to do some testing. Uh, I hauled the, the BFT 47 over there to Salt Lake uh, with the brand new translucent. Notice I'm not saying opaque. The new translucent. That's for you, brother. Uh, translucent magazines. There's no holes in them, but you can see the rounds. So you spastic American mother lovers who have this psychotic need to see your rounds in your magazine. They're like, okay, we know that there are psychotics in America who have this, this desire to see their rounds. Or the TikTok guys or the, no, the Instagrammers. So they did it. They're like, here, you want it? There you go. Uh, so we tested those out. I took. If you want, go we, ahead, can, we can play the video if you want. Oh, you, you have the video? Yeah. You have the video just to accompany everything that you're describing. Okay. I want you guys to listen. The, the neatest thing about the underground rifle tubes range is the sound that you get <laughs> it, it when you quite- use them. It doesn't quite translate, but you can get the idea. It's 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 like a Star Wars y type thing. Yeah. It really is. Go ahead and play it. What makes the grass grow? Blood, blood, blood. is the BFT 
Bulbs Forge Trunnion 47, BFT 47, brand new from Century Arms. And we even have the translucent magazines from U.S. Palm. What? There you go. <laughs> there you go. And you can see yeah. it, you can see it smoking there at the end. Yeah, that was the. So uh, before I left, uh, before I left home, I took four of the U.S. Palm magazines and stuffed them full uh, of ammo, and we trucked them over there. Uh, and between uh, well, between Jared and, and Zach and I, we spent about an hour uh, down in the tube, down in the tunnel. And we shot 30 times four. So we uh, put 120 rounds through it for between the three of us. You, you're like, well, how many malfunctions? I didn't have any. I didn't expect any. We didn't have any. Uh, the only thing I had done, I did to the gun, I had done to the gun before I, I went over there as I uh, disassembled it. And I lubricated the bolt with the red EDC CLP, uh, put it on the bolt and the rails and reassembled it. Uh, and it was that was the first time that that gun had been fired out of the box from the factory. So I'm sure it was test fired probably three or five times at the factory. Uh, no problems. Uh, we did shoot it. We did fire every single round with a bayonet in place just to reinforce and drive home the the point that these new guns do have bayonet lugs on them. Uh, something you guys should understand, though. And you old timers and you experienced people understand this when you a rifle barrel flexes, you know, when the bullet passes through, when you fire the gun, the bullet passes through, there's actually flex going on in the rifle barrel. Now, precision marksmen guys all understand that they're like, yeah, I know. I, I get it. Well, when you hang an object off of the end of the barrel, such as a bayonet, it it affects the flex, right? It it it, it affects the barrel, uh, so it will at distance affect your point of impact. So if you're going to, uh, and what would be probably fun for you if you had bayonets and so forth, is uh, and I I should probably do a video about it. Uh, go out to the range, bench your rifle, zero it, fire a group you know, from the bench, rested, you know, um, with no bayonet, you know, just standard. Okay, now you, you've got a, a benchmark. Now I know. Uh, cool. Now put the bayonet on and do the same thing and compare. Uh, compare the shot groups. And you're like, oh, you're probably like, oh, I didn't. If I got to shoot at a long distance, I probably don't want to have a sharp pokey thing hanging off the end. Yeah. But uh, it's. It is going to affect it a little bit. And and you say, well, how much? It's completely dependent on the rifle. Completely dependent on the rifle. I could tell you how mine is, but how mine is and how yours is going to be are completely different. So, uh, yeah, the, the BFT-47 performed just fine. Uh, I didn't expect it not to. The magazines, like I said, stuffed them full, 30 rounds. That's a great. That's something that, that nobody ever talks about, Zach with ak mags people are like ah, derp, 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 ar-15 and blah, 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 blah. you know on the ar side we're always having debates we're always having the how many rounds should i put in it debate and they're like they're like never put 30 rounds in a 30 round ar magazine because you won't be able to load it and then on a closed bolt and you know da 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 you download it one or download it two you know guys who used to be in the army are like never ever put 30 rounds in a magazine put 28 because you know it wears on they, this there's all kinds of psycho mythology about ah uh, if you put 30 in it'll ruin the spring but if you put 28 in it won't what i've heard that they're like oh yeah you should never put more than 28 in because it'll ruin the spring then why didn't they call it a 28 round magazine <laughs> you're like um i don't know why didn't they call it a 28 round magazine <laughs> but that's not a situation that's not a thing we have with ak's we never have the debate. People never say, oh, you, if you got an AK, make sure you download it by two rounds. Never. You know why? Because you don't need to. <laughs> you load. It's a 30-round mag. You put 30 in it. 
You set it on the shelf, you put it in your pouch, and when you eat it, it's ready to go. It's as simple as that. Um, and the other thing with the U.S. Palm magazines, people are always talking about, you know, the AR magazines and, you know, what kind of follower is it? Is it an anti-tilt follower? If it's an old follower, it's an old green one, it'll tilt and it'll cause malfunctions and so forth. They're, that's not an issue with AKs. You're like, well, you sound like a commie. You know, like, no, I sound like a guy who who uses guns and and you know, but uh, yeah, the the follower on the U.S. Palm magazines is I don't know. It's not maybe it's not perfect, but it's exactly what it needs to be. There's you're not going to get tilt out of it. You don't have to worry about that. They they feed. But they're like, I don't like them. I don't care if you don't like them or not. You know, really, I don't, I don't care. You know. If you don't like it, then don't buy it. I don't give it. I don't give a crap. But they work, and that's 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 that. Cat and hat, and that be that. So yeah, the uh, so far so good. Thumbs up. BFT forty seven running just fine, like just like expected it to, and uh, and we didn't we didn't have any stoppages with the bayonet on there. <laughs> We're like, does it work okay with the bayonet on it? Yeah, it works okay with the bayonet on it. <laughs> all right zach what should people do should they listen to you they should absolutely go go to, what, what are you implying right now look at the show notes freak oh right yeah show notes oh yeah you should uh open your ears and listen louder because i have something to say <laughs> shop sotg.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun whether you want to expand your brain increase your marksmanship or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the Pimp Hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. Yes, Yeah, indeed, that's what you should do. And, and not only should you go sh check out ShopSOTG.com just for fun, but also... Right now on ShopSOTG.com, we have a very special, brand new, never before seen, I think, product up for pre-sale. Right? Have we ever had something like this before? Mm, we got coffee mugs, but never glasses, never ah, golden glasses. Yeah, we have fairly special, we'll call it. Uh, well, actually, it's extremely special because it's awesome. Yeah. The point is, I'm rambling. Uh, official, studentofthegun.com.com. I what? don't know how to talk. Official Come on, kid. The gun pint glasses available for pre-order right now because Mardi Gras. That's right. Yes, That's indeed right. you do. This is the greatest mock-up you've ever seen in your life, of course. Mm -hmm. But it yeah, is. A, a pint glass, glass, actual glass, not plastic, should be at least. I told, I told him very specifically glass, so it should be glass. <laughs> Are in production right now. You can head over to shopsotg.com to get your very own today. If you order four, you get a discount, by the way. That's you can right. use it for, you know, it's Mardi Gras season, so you can use it for any adult or non-adult beverage you would like. And I think they're pretty great. My favorite part there about them go. is the the middle. It, it's not the the white the, that's in the like logo normally. It's like clear so you can see what's in it. I like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just uh, go to shopstg.com, order yourself uh, between one and a hundred pint glasses, and yeah, do that for us. There you go. Do it for yourself. And... Zach is, is Zach's been busy with the new products we have. You should have gotten an, a, uh, an email reminding you that we had a limited number of the exclusive double sided. That's right. The uh, official SOTG guitar picks are they have the icon on both sides. So most of the time when you get a, a, a custom guitar pick, it only has the icon in, on one side. But this one is double sided. So there you go. And it is a heavy pick. Um, and you're like, I don't like heavy picks. Just buy it for a novelty. Calm down. Yeah. Uh, and then don't forget the, uh, don't forget the, uh, the new t-shirt, the newest t-shirt product. What is the newest t-shirt product? Run your gun, not your mouth. That's right. Run your gun, not your mouth. <laughs> so th th yeah. there you go. That's what you need to do this weekend is you need to sit down, put on your run your gun, not your mouth hoodie. <laughs> Grab your guitar with your new student uh, SOTG icon uh, guitar pick, and That's then have right. a, have a lovely drink out of your official SOTG 
uh, pipe glass. Oh, and we should... Um, we should do what? We should mention to the kids at home. Yeah. All right. All the attire... I, 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 I know this is something that most of you already understand. Uh, all of the attire, all the t-shirts and the the hooded sweatshirts and so forth... Those are are made by a third party. Student of the Gun doesn't make those. Yeah, we, we don't have a sweatshirt. Zach on, on is hand. yeah. Zach doesn't sit back there. He's not screen printing every freaking shirt. Um, so if you try to order a t shirt and it says that size is out of stock, it's not because Student of the Gun is not allowing you to buy it. It's ju- it's because the actual physical t shirts. Um, they're, they're short on those t-shirts and that's just happens. I don't, I mean, that's just the way it is. Uh, I, I actually, I'm going to tell you guys a little personal story. I ordered a, uh, custom camouflage uniform. It was a, it was a made to order camouflage uniform several months ago and it's not ready. And I contacted them. I'm like, Hey dude, you know, what's going on? They're like, we're sorry, but, and they're sorry, but because, Everyone who manufactures anything in the world is dealing with shortages, supply shortages. I was at the grocery store the other day. The There was not a single pack of ramen noodles anywhere. In the whole place. In huh? the whole place. Completely sold out of ramen noodles. <sighs> Even like little cup of noodles. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. I actually, somebody told me recently that um, in the state of Texas, the grocery store's uh, don't have chicken. I was talking to a guy this weekend and he said that uh, the the grocery stores are low on, on chicken and also the the fast food joints like the Burger Kings, McDonald's and Wendy's and stuff have all like they like sorry, no chicken sandwiches. I don't I don't know what the deal is. But it, the good news is it's still chilly outside and I went to shop SOTG uh, and you can get a run your gun, not your mouth hooded sweatshirt in extra large uh, right now. They are available right now. So there you go. That's something that we did for you guys. All right. Enough pimping. Enough pimping our shiznit. Let's move on to what comes up next. The Student of the Gun Homeroom brought to you by Crossbreed Holsters. Dangerous by Madison Rising. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. You want to be dangerous on demand. I want to be dangerous on demand. Zach is going to put his brain. He's going to put his brain uh, in high gear and come up with a cool font design for a DOD patch or sticker. Yes, he is. Yes, indeed, I am. Yes, indeed, he is. He is. All right, so Crossbreed Holsters Homeroom, the homeroom, soon to the gun from Crossbreed. First of all, if you're going to get a holster from them or a belly band or anything, use the promotional code SOTG. That does two things. Number one, it lets them know that you freaks are paying attention uh, and that you actually listen to the show and listen to me talking about them and that their, that their advertisement dollars are well spent. Uh, and it also gives you a discount. So win-win all around. So don't be lazy. Just use the promo code, SOTG. All right, we got a story from Amoland.com. Now, I'm going to caution you. You may be thinking, this is an old story. Why are you talking about it? Okay. This, the story from Amoland is dated 23 February, so it was last week. Now, the incident actually happened several years ago. But the reason we're talking about it is because they, uh, the writer, uh, Dean Weingarten, Dean is our guy when it comes to animal attacks and, and ammo land. <laughs> he likes to write about them and we like to share them. So uh, they did a Freedom of Information Act request, ammo land did, uh, and they were able to get the specifics of this uh investigation of this bear attack investigation and i thought you know what this even though this happened a while ago the fact of the matter is there's still 
brown and black and and white bears if you encounter a white bear in the wilderness you're either dealing with an albino or you're in alaska or the north pole uh and i don't are there are there polars in the in the northern regions of alaska i don't know i mean the north pole's up there and i figure they could walk over because who's going to stop them right you know <laughs> and i know that there are, are white bears in canada in northern canada so uh and i'm not a botanist or an, an animal uh expert by i didn't even, i didn't even stay in at holiday and express last night but zach go ahead and, and uh, help us out here what's the story say all right the story is shed antler collector with 40 against uh sow grizzly i said this was done by uh dean weingarten this is another in a series of def self-defense against bear events uncovered in a freedom of information act request done by ammo land it seems they have not been published before. At about 10 a.m. on the morning of May 28, 2016, a father-son pair of shed antler collectors were searching for antlers in the Bear Creek drainage of the Shoshone, Shoshone National Forest, about 16 miles northeast of Dubois, Wyoming. Is that Dubois? I guess. The father and son... It's, I don't think it's Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> D-U-B-O-I-S. You pr pronounce that however you want. The father and son Dubos. had separated. The father and son had separated. The father went up a draw, and the son went up a side hill to a flat bench. The son had reached the top of the bench when he saw a, quote, brown flash, unquote, in the tree line above him. He thought his father had probably flushed an animal out of the draw. As he looked at it again, he realized it was a grizzly bear, and it was turning. it was running toward him. Hmm. The son yelled at the bear and drew his Springfield subcompact. He did not have a round in the chamber. <sighs> the Springfield comes with a 9-round and a 10-round magazine. He chambered around and checked it to be sure the safety was off. The pistol was new. He had never fired it before. His father had owned the same model for some time. The son noticed, as the bear continued to run on him, that it appeared to be in a full-charge mode, with its ears laid back. He noticed a cub was with the sow, and the sow came within 30 yards of him. He started firing at the bear and moving to put a small tree between him and the charging grizzly. The son fired his final rounds of the charging bear approached within feet. The bear went down and slid down slope about five yards where it died. In the investigation that followed, 10 40 caliber brass were found at the scene. The brass was within two to three yards of the bear, putting the location of the defender within five to six yards of where the bear expired. Mm hmm. Oh, so, man, there's so many things in this. Number one, it, it, it makes me cringe when I see things like, did not have a round in the chamber. Oh, oh man. <laughs> it's just, I don't know about you guys. When I hear stuff like that, I think, oh, dear Heavenly Father, help me. Holy Spirit! Holy Spirit! Help me. You've seen those maymays where they're calling the Holy Spirit to help them. So, and it said, checked. This is, all right. I looked up Springfield Armory Subcompact 40. Okay, the Subcompact 40 is an XD, right? Now, it has a grip safety. The XD has a grip safety, which is the bane of many people's existence. If you guys have ever, people who um, think that the grip safety on the XD is not a problem and it's a good feature and I'm glad that it's there, those people have never taken a training class with an XD uh, or a training class where the guy next to them on the line was using an XD. Uh, Pete. People who don't, you know, who doesn't like XDs, firearms trainers, uh, because they've seen them and they've seen so many people screw them up and and have stoppages or the gun was supposed to go bang and it didn't. So that the one thing that I find weird about the story is he said check the safety to make sure it was off. 
There's no manual safety on an XD40 subcompact. So I'm not sure what he was checking. Um, but the idea that it was new and he had never fired it, what kind of psychopathic nonsense is that? You know, and I'm glad it, it worked out for this guy, and I, I'm glad he didn't get killed. Uh, but when I see things like that, I'm like, it was a new gun and he never fired it. Oh, my brain said, give me the Advil. My brain hurts. <laughs> now, the, uh, the, the good news, though, is for people who say that you can never stop a bear with a handgun, so don't even try, you're stupid. That's not necessarily true. Um, I, I wouldn't be looking to get a one-shot stop on a bear. You know, <laughs> uh, one shot stop unless you were the luckiest son of a gun in the world uh, and it goes right through the eyeball and cuts the brainstem. Uh, that's pretty rare. You know, people say, well, what are you going to do with that? I was like, I I'm going to shoot that thing until it stops moving or I run out of ammo. And it looks like this guy ran out of ammo. And since they found 10 40 caliber brass casings uh on the ground so that would be all of them because if he didn't have a round in the chamber <laughs> and they come with nine and ten round magazines this is what we probably know being colombo here uh is that he had the 10 round mag shoved into the gun with no round in the chamber he chambered one thank the lord he was able to chamber it and then he kept pressing the trigger until the gun stopped making noise essentially, uh, which is not surprising. So good news as, uh, and the thing is people are like, Oh, every time there's a bear attack, somebody says, well, well, where was their food? They didn't have their food in a bear bag. They should have known better. All right. The bear smelled people and as you should know better than to get between a sow and her cub. Or sometimes things just happen. And sometimes bears just attack you because guess what? Bears are predators. Yeah, they sure are. And they're omnivores, which means that they will eat nuts and berries and you. So there you go. Uh, but please 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 i'm begging you i'm begging you uh if you get it when you get a, a new gun do not carry the gun until you've test fired it until you've taken it out and shot it uh the one thing i got in here it says neither uh neither the father or the son were carrying bear spray um it in a situation when, when a bear puts its head down and comes straight at you full bore as fast as they can, that's not a that's not a bear spray time anyway. Um yeah. So I uh, I guess maybe the idea is well, he didn't notice it until it was already charging, so yeah. The, the this I did a I did a video on bear spray versus guns or the truth about bear spray and something like that. Yeah. yeah. I think it's called the truth about bear spray. Uh, but bear spray is not for charging, attacking animals. It's for animals that won't go away. You know, they, they won't leave us alone. They, they're, you know, whatever. Um, yeah. The hippies and liberal idiots and the Bambi police. Oh, you should wear bells and carry bear spray. That dead guide up there in, uh, in Jackson, in the uh, the dead hunting guide used a whole can of bear spray and still got eaten. So there you go, hippies. Uh, there you go. Uh, my recommendation to you is if you get a new gun, actually go out and shoot it. You know, I mean, he killed the thing, so he did. I mean, you know, uh, kudos to him. You know, good job to him for for making the thing not kill him. But when I hear stuff like 
didn't have a round chamber, was a new gun and never shot it before. I was like, oh. <laughs> oh. Of course, Zach. Yes. We would have never known all that stuff if he would have lost. Oh, yeah. Like, if he would have been killed by the bear, they, they wouldn't have been able to interview him afterwards and say, yeah. hey, how did that happen? What happened? You know? Uh, oh, phew. All right, so that is your that's your student of the gun homeroom. Uh, if you buy a gun, actually take it out and shoot that sucker. You know, make sure that it's going to go bang every time. And if you don't have enough confidence in your own abilities to carry a handgun with a round chambered, you need to get your butt into a training class. You need to get your butt into a school, okay? Um because that's they're supposed to be carried with a round in the chamber. And if you're looking, if you're checking the manual safety on an XD, uh, keep looking. Keep looking. Let me, let me know when you find it. <laughs> that's why I was a little confused. I was like. Well, he did say it was a new gun, so maybe he didn't realize there wasn't a manual safety. Oh. <sighs> That just that's you my make, hypothesis. You make my head hurt even more. <laughs> Woo, some people just are lucky. Some people are just lucky. And I I hope this guy, when it was all over, went to church and lit a candle and said a prayer because it did say it did say he started praying. He was lucky. He was a lucky mofo. All right, so we have two nearly identical stories, one from the Northeast or Midwest, one from the Midwest, uh, and uh, one from the South. And But they essentially play out very similarly to each other. I wasn't sure which one to talk about first, but it doesn't really matter. So let's go ahead and hit the first one. Uh, this is from... Channel 13, WTHR, Indianapolis, Indiana. And uh, it says the, well, I'll read the title, Zach, and then you can get into the deets. It says the ISP superintendent blasts GOP. The ISP superintendent blasted him. I don't know how he blasted him. Uh, I don't know what he blasted him with, but he blasted the GOP on the constitutional carry bill. And this is when you say, all right, let's go ahead and and, uh, park the car for a second and dissect this. What is an ISP? That would be the the Indiana State Police. All right. So the Indiana State Police Supervisor, Doug Carter... Doug Carter, and uh, I'm going to work really hard, Zach. I'm going to promise you while you're reading the details of this, I'm going to do some breathing meditation exercises so that I don't say swears on the public hour. To help keep me from having to hit the beep button. All right, and I shall begin. Yes, begin, please. Indiana currently requires people to obtain a license to carry a loaded handgun outside of their own homes, businesses, and cars. Indianapolis. A proposal that could... uh, This is the 24th, by the way. 24th of February. Yep, February 24th, 2022. A proposal that ultimately... That could ultimately repeal Indiana's handgun permit requirement remained alive in the legislature on Thursday, despite the objections of major law enforcement groups and officials including the head of the state police. The Republican-dominated Senate Judiciary Committee advised the bill late Wednesday following an eight-hour meeting that ended with three GOP senators joining committee Democrats in approving an amendment that a Republican supporter said, quote, guts the bill completely, unquote. Supporters said they then voted in support of the measure only so that it could possibly be changed back to its original form in votes by the full Senate next week. The co- oh. okay. Go on. The committee's action followed testimony from officers with the Evansville and Fort Wayne Police Departments and leaders of the state Fraternal Order of Police, Police mm. Chiefs Association, and County Prosecutors Association. They argued that eliminating the permanent system would 
strip police of a screening tool for identifying dangerous people who shouldn't have guns. The state police superintendent, Doug Carter, a Republican who previously served as a sheriff of Hamilton County, was unusually pointed at his criticism, in his criticism of the Republican push to repeal the permit requirement. Quote, it's, of, it's often so easy to talk about your support for public safety, Carter said. But if you choose to support this bill, you will not be supporting us. All right, you can go ahead and stop right there because I'm about to go through the roof. Number one, step number one, there's this thing called an R-I-N-O, a Republican in name only. Doug Carter got his job. I, well, he was probably appointed. It says he's a Republican. Uh, that might be how he registered, but he is a liberal elitist piece of human garbage. Uh, it is often easy to talk about support for public safety. But if you choose to support this bill, you will not be supporting us. Hey, Doug, uh, maybe you guys could put this on speaker uh, up there in Indiana. Hey, Doug, it's not about you, you elitist scumbag. Oh, well, people shouldn't be allowed because it will put police officers in jeopardy. Yeah, because criminals are already, you know, criminals they're like, well, uh, I can't pass the 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 uh, the Indiana State Concealed Carry Permit requirements, so I'm I'm not gonna carry a gun or a knife or anything else because that would be against the law. Kids, we got to get beyond this. It's 2022. We got to get beyond the the ridiculous, nonsensical, unsupportable lies that punishing the law abiding, putting extra steps upon the law abiding citizen, people who are predisposed to obey the law anyway, is going to somehow affect the behavior of criminals. Sorry. But it has never, ever been the case. Oh, uh, 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 uh. <sighs> guys, as I said in the uh, in the work up to this show, right now in the United States, right now in the United States and the world, but let's just talk about the United States. Police officers, hey, Doug, have you heard the news? Police agencies in the United States have a bad image problem. Maybe someone should let the, uh, the, the unionists over at the FOP know. And the Police Chiefs Association is a, a liberal Democrat scumbag organization. And they always have been. I was a cop, and the whole time I was a cop, I was disgusted at how the police chief's organizations were a bunch of hacks and Democrats and freaking scumbags, supporters of Democrat politicians. Hey, Doug, you need to understand something. Cops in America have an image problem. And the image problem is not with the crooks, okay? Uh, it's not with the criminals. Now, if you want to, uh, if you want to curry favor with the criminal, okay, I understand. If that is your goal, if your goal, Doug, is to curry favor with criminals, well, then I understand where you're coming from. I understand, you know, your your standpoint there. Um, if your if your goal is to curry favor with the communists, with Democrats, with the ruling class scumbags in government, then I understand. But if your goal is to curry favor with the people, this is not how you go about that. Telling the people that they are required course you see none of this concealed carry garbage uh it doesn't apply 
to the elitists in the blue uniforms or gray uniforms or brown uniforms uh, because, well, they work for the state. And so the rules that we apply to the peasants don't apply to us, which is tyranny. I'm going to remind you of something we talked about last week on the grad program. Uh, It's a quote from Colonel Jeff Cooper. If violent crime is to be curbed, it is only the intended victim who can do it. The felon does not fear the police, and he fears neither judge nor jury. Therefore, what he must be taught to fear is his victim. And I challenge anybody out there to tell me that I'm wrong. You see, old Doug here is like, ah, derp, derp, public safety, and you need to support us. Hey, Doug, how about you support the oath that you supposedly took? You remember that oath that you took, Doug, to support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America? How about you support that, Doug? So that's what's going on in Indiana. In Indiana, I don't know what it is about state police organizations, but every it seems like every state you go to, Ohio, um, Indiana, you, you just keep ticking them off. The, the state cops are this ruling class elitist organization. We don't think citizens should be allowed to carry guns. Why? Because only police should be allowed. Why? Because in the United States, it says, well, you know, here in the United States, we have the ruling class and then we have the serf peasant class. And the ruling class gets to do things that the peasants can't do. Is that the United States of America? And that's when they say, oh, no, that's not true. You can you can go and 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 bring your money and your pictures and your fingerprint card and, and the and the 17 page form that you filled out and you can beg for our permission to get a to get a you know a little plastic card. You will allow you to ask for permission. Oh, will you? If I give you enough money, you'll you'll sell my rights back to me. Doug, uh, I got an idea, Doug. How about we make every one of your cops pay $200 a year to carry a gun? You can't do that. We have a right. That's part of our job. No, I think every every cop in Indiana should have to pay $200 a year. They should have to pay a $200 a year gun permit to be allowed to carry a gun on duty. sophistry why do you think because you got hired to work for the state that you are better than the people why do you think that the state gets to hold an unalienable right hostage and force the people to ransom it back for public safety venture forth and consume a giant satchel of richards there doug So that's in the Midwest, in a supposed Republican state. Let's go down south. And uh, this has been cooking in Alabama for a while. This has been percolating in Alabama for a while. And we've reported on it before, but we've got a relatively new story. So, uh, Zach, would you help us out here with this one? Absolutely. I'd be more than happy to. So this uh, this story, rather, is from the 22nd quote, or not quote, uh, headline, Constitutional Carry Passes in State House of Representatives. In a 65 to 37 vote, the proposed Constitutional Carry Bill, allowing Alabamians to carry a handgun without a permit, passed through the House of Representatives and will now head to the Senate. Mm. The bill has been championed by gun rights groups who are against the currently required permit. To get a permit, Alabamans have to pay 20 bucks. The House Democrats can argue that the bill would actually defund the police without the funding that currently comes from permits. Groups of law enforcement officials made a presence at the House, persisting 
that the passing would also put officers' lives at risk. Quote, I'm not speaking from brief knowledge of what is going on, Lee County Sheriff J. Jones said. Quote, I've been a law enforcement officer for five decades. I'm basically All right, stop right there. Okay, Lee County Sheriff J. Jones said, I've been a law enforcement officer for five decades. So let's just say that Lee became a cop at age 18. Probably not. Probably more like 20 or 21. So that puts Lee in the 68 to 71 range. I think Lee needs to retire. What do you think? Lee, or not Lee, J. Jones. I think J. Jones needs to retire. Maybe. Go spend some time with your grandkids, Jay. That's an option. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Go on. I'm basing it on my experience and what I have seen through the years. There are a lot of other law enforcement officers that feel the same way. This is something that we are out. This is something that we are disappointed in, but we will continue to fight to do what we can to keep this legislation from coming out. And that's all right. So right there, that little bit is if you are a citizen of the state of Alabama, you should be incensed. You should be red in the face, angry. Uh, A lot of other law enforcement officers feel the same way. Then they're traitors and scumbags. If you have cops that think that because, well, I'm a police officer, I can carry a gun or whatever I want, or whatever, but you, you peasants aren't allowed. You have to come to us and ask for permission. Uh, this would be a way of defunding the police. Hey, um, holding rights hostage is not supposed to be a money-making scheme. Since when did, all right, Zach, what branch of government are police officers and sheriffs and chiefs? What branch of government are they in? No. I'm going to punch you through the screen if you don't say. What branch? There's only three. Executive. It's not a trick question. Executive? Yeah, the executive. Say it loud and proud like you know what you're talking about. Executive. The executive branch. Is the executive branch in charge of, of uh, creating law? Yes. No, they're not. they're not. I know they're not. All right. The executive branch is actually specifically forbidden to create law because they're law enforcement. You cannot allow in a, in a Republican uh, nation, in a, in a republic, you cannot allow one branch to both create and enforce laws. Because what we, we learned from history is that if you allow a branch to create the laws that they're going to enforce, they're just going to decide, they're going to say, what do we want to do? Well, we we want to be able to arrest people for doing this. Well, then we'll just make it a law and we'll start arresting people. That leads straight to tyranny. You cannot allow the king to create law because when the king creates law, you end up with tyranny. It is nobody in the planet going to point out that law enforcement are the executive branch and have no business attempting to influence laws. Nobody's going to point that out. They're like, no, I think we need to take the police officers opinions into into. A f- I mean, all right. So what I want to know is if they're bringing in cops to testify. uh. How many citizens are they bringing in to testify? How many law abiding, you know, law respecting citizens are they bringing in to testify? Well, what do you, well, but they're not experts. They're just peasants. They're just the plebes. They're the, they're the people we get the money from. And I, you know, I brought this up and are we going to go ahead and default to a, a First Amendment free speech um, a permitting system? Would we would we go for that with the liberals and Democrats and scumbags? Maybe they would. I mean, we're at the point now. Yeah, I was going to say, because here's the thing. They would get their licenses. They fine. would. Yeah, like, we're at the like, point like now. CNN anchors and shit stuff. Dang it. What, like the day the law got passed, they would get them in the mail. They would get theirs, but people like Joe Rogan would have theirs pulled. You cannot allow the state 
to hold your if you if it's it's I don't know how much how to say this any clearer. If it's a right, then you shouldn't have to pay for it. Okay? If you have to pay to exercise a right, it's not a right. Okay? It's a privilege. And you say, oh, no, no, it's it's a right. Well, if it's a right, you shouldn't have to pay for it. And you shouldn't have to go... If it's a right, you don't have to go to the state, to the executive branch of government, and ask them for permission. Zach, did a light bulb just go off in your in your brain, or what? Uh, no. Uh, apparently, the door wasn't latched, and the cat came in, and, and something, something came just, and touched you. Something touched <laughs> something touched me that I didn't expect. You weren't expecting to be touched, and you got excited for a second there. Yuck. Oh. Well, let, let, let's bring some happiness into this. Dumpster cookie. Yep. Can you hear? That's her? your. Their cat is called Dumpster Cookie. Yeah, her, her name is Dumpster Cookie. Say hello. Oh. I don't. I don't know how I failed you. So it, it was um, a Christmas gift for Sammy. I know. I know. I know. And, and bless you. Bless all of your hearts. So, ladies and gentlemen, here's the deal. If you're in Indiana, uh, or if you are in Alabama, number one, you need to be getting rid of some some of these career cops when you have career cops that think that it's their job to make sure that citizens can't carry guns well it'll put us in danger how are you in danger from law-abiding citizens explain that to me well then because and and i want to explain i want you to explain to me how allowing the law-abiding to have their rights is going to affect the behavior of criminals. This is putting our our officers in danger. That that's that's akin to the the Ohio State, the commandant of the Ohio State Highway Patrol, who lobbied against the the uh, shall issue permit system in Ohio, stating that if this passes, my officers will be in danger from encountering armed motorists why so you you think that the average citizen that citizens are just going to start shooting your officers arbitrarily because they wouldn't have before they wouldn't have before and he said now we're going to have to deal with with armed drivers with with armed occupants so you're telling me that up to before they passed the shall issue in Ohio, that criminals, you never encountered a criminal with a gun in a traffic stop? Really? It's lies. It is pure propaganda and lies. And the Alabama one actually, see, this is where at least they told a little bit of the truth. Oh, this is like defunding the police because they they get that money from the permits. It's not. I don't know how to state this any more plainly. Police officers are not supposed to be in the job of uh, or in the occupation of taxing the citizens. It, it, it's also it gives me the vibe of like that uh, that traffic ticket revenue. Oh yeah, the like the, re the revenue stream. The revenue that you get from yeah, I know the revenue that you're supposed to be getting from pass handing out tickets. Yeah, it's like that shouldn't be considered revenue. When you when you put police officers in, in a position to collect taxes from the peasants, that is not good for a republic. That is tyranny. Okay. And it is not the job of police officers to collect taxes from the peasants. And if you think it is, you're not living in the United States of America. So this is what I'm going to tell you guys in Indiana and Alabama. If you really want to have your rights back and secure them, you need to make sure that all of your reps know. And scumbag career cops like this Lee County Sheriff Jay Jones, they sheriffs have to be voted in. You can vote them out. And I know there's some people out there like, hey, what, what's a, like, the blue kind of guy? And I thought he supported lots of look, look, here's the deal. There are no sacred cows in the world. 
All right. You don't get a free pass because you wear a blue polyester uniform. Uh, you don't get to do and say anything you want because you have a badge. And if you have a badge and you are acting against the interests of the people, if you're violating your oath of office, uh, if you're a Stasi puke bag in New York arresting women and children because they didn't show their their vax papers you don't get a pass you're an enemy of the people am i supposed to back the blue when those stasi gestapo crap balls up in in ottawa are running people over with these trampling people with horses and you know, pepper spraying grandmas for the audacity to speak out against their government if you're being used as a tool to silence the people, you don't get a pass. And, and if you're one of these these imbecilic morons are like, back the blue, I back the blue, no matter what, I always no. there's no no matter what. People need to be held responsible for their behavior. End of story. I don't care what kind of uniform you wear. You're held responsible for your behavior. And in this case, we have people in uniforms acting as tyrants and traitors, acting as elitists, as a ruling class. That is not a republic. That is not the United States. It might be something else, but that's not the United States. And this lie of hiding behind public safety is just that. It's propaganda and it's a lie. And I'm not going to put up with it. Other people might. They might soft soap it and, oh, well, we have to listen to what they have to say. Why in the United States of America do we have to automatically default to what some chief of police says? There are rulers now. There are our, our governors, our kings, our, our, our lords. We, we, we're just peasant serfs occupying the land. And, and uh, the sheriff of Nottingham is going to come tell us what we have to do and collect taxes from us. And if we don't give him our tax money, he's going to throw us in jail. Uh, and the idea that police leaders in America still haven't gotten the memo about their image problem. Who, who are they? Whose support are they courting? Who do they want to support them? Obviously not citizens. I, I guess they're they're perfectly happy to be to be uh, thugs of a totalitarian as of a tyrant state. I guess they're happy to be the enforcement arm of the Democrat Party. And if that's what you've got in your area, you're a citizen and there's more of us than there are of them. And it's time to change it. And you better let your reps know that you're not happy and that you are not going to allow your rights to be held hostage and ransom back to you. That's cat in the hat and that'd be that. And I'm not, I'm like I said, I'm not going to put up with this crap and I'm not going to remain silent about it. All right. Tomorrow, get your kids off of TikTok for the love of all that's holy. That is. We got a leadership trait. We've got a fighting fitness for you. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, socialism and stormtroopers and uh, not those kind of stormtroopers, but the other ones and all that uh, on the bonus hour of Student of the Gun Radio. So please feel free to join us. How can they do that, Zach? How can they join us? You can go to getsotg.com right now, join the grad program. Go through the trial. If you love it as much as you should, you can stay. Uh, we would love to have you. You can join the official, special, grad program only part of the Discord where you can get to see the live broadcasts of the bonus hours. And then you also, of course, get uh, cl special discounts, early access to stuff, special products. To stuff. <laughs> uh, training classes, special grad program only training classes. Yep. Pretty bad. Uh, awesome, if I do say so myself. Yep. So, yeah www.getsotg.com getsotg.com that's g-e-t-s-o-t-g dot c-o-m there you go there you go all right ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for being a part of the student of the gun audience and for having the courage to listen uh i'm gonna go ahead and uh 
and sign off right now. But remember, you're a beginner once, but you're a student for life. We appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at The Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new, free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. Are you a social butterfly? Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for new content each and every day at Student of the Gun. Watch Student of the Gun TV and videos from our trusted partners on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and even AirPlay. Go to studentofthegun.com for direct links. And remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.